Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about loops and assignment and when can we use loops, what we shouldn't be doing inside a loop and what should we do inside the loop. So I do have another video on the same topic uh, getting into more deeper and I also have diagrams to ex help explain the concept. Today we're going to look at a simple use case for the loops because I do get requests on how to use the loop all the time. So let's look at a use case. For example, I, ha I needed a button here. I'm on the account record. I needed a button on account. So on clicking that button, I wanted to update all the contacts associated with that account with the same address. So I want to update the mailing address of the contact, let's say mailing state and mailing country, equal to billing state and billing country from the account. There could be any reason why this use case is just an example. So now we know that there could be more than one contact associated with an account. So number one thing to use a loop is whenever you are dealing with a multi multiple records update or insert. So if you want to update, mass update a bunch of records at once, or maybe you want to create a bunch of records from a different list, we know that we're going to be using loop. So that's the first part. The second part is where I see um, some mistakes or some confusion around that. So what I do see happening is I'm going to actually open up a flow builder and we're just going to use a screen flow today. Let's start with actually getting the record that we are in. So we are on the account page and if I embed this flow as an action on that account page, I will already have the record ID. So what I need to now do is get records because I want to get all the contacts. I'm just going to say get contacts and object I'm trying to get the contact here and condition will be account ID equals going to create a new resource and this is also very important especially if you are using an action is you want to make sure your variable is called exactly this record ID data type is text it should be pronounced uh, it should be spelled exactly like this in order for the flow to know that you are on the account page and passing that input so say value for input hit done so that's my condition and i'm just going to say get me all the records because i want to update all the contact records automatically store all fields this is optional the first selection makes it easier but you can also choose the rest we're just going to go with the first option here hit done so we've got the contact record now we know that we need to update all these contact records at once. So logically we're going to use loops here. So loop through contact and the collection variable. So loop is always working with a list. So list is the collection of different contacts in this case. So contact from get accounts. We're going to loop from first item to last item and it's going to automatically create another loop variable which we'll look into in a second. So we got the loops, um, loop of contact here. So this is where after this, it gets a little bit tricky, right? So now you have all the contacts stored and you're looping. So this thing means you're looping. So now how do you update each contact address with the account address? In order to do that, actually, we'll also need to grab the account information first because so I'm just going to say get records, get account, because we are going to be updating the contact address with the account. So we need to get all the other account fields as well. So account, in this case, I'm just going to say ID, because we are already on the account page, equals record ID. So that's the text. And in this scenario, it's only the first record, because there can be only one account with one ID. We can't have more than one account with same ID. So we got the account records. It doesn't matter where you place them. Obviously you wanna place them before the loop starts. So now we have the loop here. We've got the contact and account. We can start connecting these here. Now the next thing logically should be somehow we need a way to get these contacts and assign with the account address. So this is where let's look at the diagram here. So now think of this individual sheets of paper or as contacts. So let's say you're trying to file something 
and you need it to bring one paper at a time into that file. So you're going to take one paper, put in the file, second paper, put in the file, third paper, put in the file. So as you can see, you're making multiple rounds because you're taking one thing at a time. Imagine you could just club them all together, take the whole stack of papers at once, in this case, the whole stack of contacts at once, and then directly insert it instead of doing one at a time. This is where you're going to run into issues with DML errors or let's say if you had more than 150 contacts you'd have to do that 150 times and then your transaction will error out. So which is why we want to make we want to avoid this and insert everything at once. So now how do we do that? How do we insert everything at once? So we're gonna use assignment because assignments what they do is they just assign things. So on those each each paper sheet or each contact we are doing something. So now assign contact and this is where since we use the flow loop it creates a loop variable. So the loop variable is always the same as your collection of loops. So if you are looping through contact collection your loop variable will be a contact. So this is where loop through contact is created automatically. Now what do we want to do here mailing? Let's go with the country equals, what should that be? It should be the account that we queried because that's what we want to do. Account dot billing country. And then maybe add another assignment. So this is the contact dot state or mailing state equals count dot billing state okay and if there were other scenarios other assignments you could add that here hit done so for each item in the collection I want to loop through this that's it so now what do we do next we we so basically let's say if there were 10 contacts, 10 individual contacts. Adding the loop means you're looping through it 10 times. So the record is going to come here. The system will come here. It will take one contact, loop through it, go to the next element, assign that variable. Then it's going to come back because there's another contact. Come back, do the same thing, and then repeat. So this is going to keep repeating until it goes through each and every contact in that collection. So now we have that assignment ready and then we just close shall we just close the loop here is that all we need let's just try to run this um, there's something missing here but we'll look at that so now since we assigned everything we still need the dml database manipulation so we still need to update those contacts so i'm just going to say update contacts and what do we use the IDs and all field values or specified conditions? Since we already have the collection and we looped through that collection, we assigned it. So in our case, that was the contact list that we looped through. So that will be the contacts from get contacts. Hit done. So closing this loop, meaning the arrow goes back. So that's the end of the loop. We're not doing anything other than assignment in that loop. And so your connecting to that other one should be coming from the loop, not from the assignment, because the assignment is inside the loop. So I'm just going to put it here for clarity and then save it. Okay, so, so I want to show you how it looks in the back end now. Um, let's, instead of creating that action, I'm just going to pass it here and try to debug it. So hit debug and it will ask you for the record ID. Pass that account record ID because it will be on the account page and see the here. So it's really important that you go through these debug logs to understand what's really happening in the background. That's where it will make a lot more sense. So initially we're getting the account. It takes all the account records 
stores the values. The next, it takes the account ID and store these values. And if you can notice here, it actually is smart enough to only store the values that you are using and it doesn't store all the values, which is pretty smart. And then it's looping through contacts. So you see how you have two, so there's a square bracket and if you're programming, you already know this, but basically the square bracket means a list in programming. So we've got first contact ID and the second contact ID because I had two contacts in that account. So it's saying current iteration item. So that's the first one. It goes inside the first one. It loops through it. The result here in the assignment is mailing country equal to United States or United Kingdom. And the mailing state is Texas. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's just a bad example. Then it goes through the second one, RIAZ, takes the mailing country equals to United Kingdom, mailing state is Texas. Because for me, both the, the United Kingdom is coming from the account and we're just updating that to the contact. So if I go to the record itself, so that we'll see what in the front end. So here is country is United Kingdom and state is Texas. And now we're trying to make all of those contacts the same. So that's why it's assigning all of them the same value. And at the end, update these contacts. So what happens here? Mailing country, null. Mailing state, null. So what happened? It, it didn't take your values. It just completely ignored it and we still have null and null. So why did that happen? Now let's get back to the flow here because I mentioned that there was, there was something missing before we started assigning the values. So instead of connecting it directly after the last item, let's remove that because that clearly didn't work. What happens here is you're taking each paper one at a time, assigning the value. Okay, so you're just assigning the value and that's it. Taking one at a time, assigning it. But we didn't really take all those papers and put it in a file in order to take that file and insert it into the database. So what I mean by that is going back to the diagram. Here you're just assigning each, so you're taking, let's take a color. We're taking each contact, assigning the mailing state and mailing country. Then we're doing the same thing here, doing the same thing on the other contact. And then we're not really collecting them in order to insert. So this step, the blue line here, is not there in that example. So for that, we need to take another assignment. So now what we need to do, assign loops, loop variable, because th those were single papers or single record to collection. So we can mass update the collection. So in order to do that, you'll need an empty container first. So you need an empty file to store all those values. So it's gonna create a variable var contact collection or you can say var list contact, whatever works best for you. Data type here is record, but you have to check this allow multiple values because we're creating a collection of records. And it should be contact because the loop variable was contact and we're trying to update contact, so it makes sense to use contact here. Hit done. So now here, instead of equals, we want to add. So add means we're taking in the empty bucket, adding one by one to it. If you could see me, I'm making hand gestures. But um, so now what we want to add here is that those individual records or individual loop variables. And we should have that under record single, current item from loop. And here you don't need the dot here. Just remove that dot and that's it. Because so this type of this collection should match type of this individual record. So hit done. And we already looped through that, so remove that as well. Come here, connect that way. Basically, you're coming through the loop, so contact one comes here, goes to the assignment, assigns the value, 
puts it in a bucket. Then same thing happens. So you need to connect this way so that it goes back, takes the contact to, assign those state values, and then put that single record into that bucket of records. And it keeps going until it goes through all the contacts. And then, since the loop is closed, you connect this update records. And now in update records, instead of updating that individual initial list that we got, we want to update the bucket that we collected from. So this one, where contact collection, because that's where our new values are. Hit done. And save this. Now we're going to debug this one more time. And then we're going to notice what happens here. Now, the first initial step should be the same. So everything from here onward should be the same. We've got the two contacts, two things. Great. So right here towards the end, now here you can see United Kingdom mailing country. ID is that one. It automatically stores the ID, so you don't have to store IDs. Mailing state. Mailing country got assigned to United Kingdom mailing state Texas. So now it works because we took those individual records, added it to a collection, and the collection knows it has the IDs and it just updates in one go. So you just used one update statement here. And if you want to compare this with um, code, I just want to show you real quick. Don't worry about, I have a trigger um, and I have the code inside the trigger, so don't come, come at me with that. But here, if you are from programming background, this is what we're doing. We're taking contact, C, list contact, so that's our list of collection. Then we're saying state equal to something. And then this is the list to update. So here we are creating the empty contact list list to update dot add just like how we saw add c and then update we can put the update outside of the for loop so same thing but we are doing it in a graphical way so this example was actually just to display and show you how to use a loop and assignment and what not to do inside a loop but there is a easy way to do what we just did without using a loop especially when it comes to this uh, simple example. So instead of using a flow loop, what we're going to do is use update records. So we used here, use the IDs and all field values, the first option. But if you use the second option here, where it says specify conditions to identify records. So right here, instead of querying that contact first and then looping through it and assigning it, what you can also do is get the contact here where account ID equals record ID so same thing like we did before and right here you can set your values mailing state equals the account since we already queried the account dot billing state and and you can add other assignments as you can see here and that's pretty much all you need to do and you can save this remove this one from here because we still need the account and contact that connect that so that's a simple way of doing this but i wanted to show you a loop so that you can understand the concept of loop and so you can apply it to more complex scenarios so uh, i hope that makes sense and i hope i didn't confuse you a lot but this is the standard pattern that you'll be following in most of the loops and assignment concept so this is very important the second piece of it is very important you have to assign it to a empty collection in order to update or insert it thank you so much for watching please let me know if you have any questions